Hi guys, how are you doing? Steve Elliott here again. Um, this is a painting I did in a live stream last night. It took two and a half hours and this is going to be the condensed version uh, that compresses the whole thing down to about 15 minutes. So let's get into it. Here we are in Art Rage 5. Um, <clears throat> this is on the PC. I have loaded up my toolbox. If you want to know how to um, create a toolbox and set that up, I've already made a video on that actually. So I'll put a link uh, in the description and maybe um, a link that sort of pops up uh, to that video so you can um, have a go at that yourself because it really is useful to have different toolboxes for different projects. So if I'm doing watercolors, I just load up uh, this toolbox it's got the pencil in I need it's got an eraser and it's got all the watercolor brushes that I want I've got a similar one for when I'm doing pastels or pencil work and another one for oil painting so it just makes it so much easier to have all of those brushes at hand uh, so the painting I'm doing today th this was obviously in the live stream uh, I produced a sketch and it's from this photograph uh, to the bottom right uh, I'm going to change the composition around a little bit uh, to suit the painting. I'm sort of moving the tree along a little bit. And um, it's a bit of a cluttered scene. Um, I decided to do this as a watercolour, mainly because I kind of wanted the background to be all sort of diffused and uh, very soft. And I thought the white of the paper would uh, be a cool way to try and get those um, the, the water running over the rocks so that was the um reason why i went for a watercolor and not thick oil paint or anything like that and i'm using well i suppose four brushes if you count the pencil i'm using the odd and dark pencil and uh i've got that with a sort of a gray color that's on and, and i did that on one layer then locked the layer so i'm not going to touch the pencil work again I never hide the pencil layer. That is part of the painting and is meant to be part of the painting. So I want that to be uh, visible. I don't mind if it gets obscured by the paint. That's fine. But if there's any odd lines that are left at the end, that's cool. Uh, I want them to be there. And that's how I've always painted traditional watercolour. I've liked the pencil mark to be part of the piece not just something that is used to um as a skeleton if you like to sort of set out the piece and then is hidden from view the the drawing is definitely part of the piece so anyway the next stage i go in i put in a color wash pretty much over the whole of the paper and i'm using colors that are local to um, the the area. So another quick look at the uh, photo there. Uh, that, that was from the live stream. Uh, I forgot to cut that bit out. Sorry about that. So I'm just sort of diffusing. I've created another layer and just sort of putting in these sort of uh, random lines really that sort of give the the shape of the, the ground as it's sort of um, going away from that little stream the stream wasn't very big at all it was it was a sort of a man-made thing uh, in a local park i thought it was done very well it looks very natural so uh, i thought it would make a, a quite a, a nice cool painting because i don't think i've ever done water running over rocks before um, i may have done but i, I can't remember so i'm just sort of going in first of all getting in like the local colors and as are always with watercolor, I start off with very pale washes and then start building up from there and uh, letting the layers beneath glow through. And quite often, uh, what I did um, on several of the layers on this one, every time I created a new, new layer, I set the blend mode to watercolor. That I've only ever seen that blend mode available in Art Rage. I haven't ever seen it in any other app. So uh, I, I guess the idea is it gives you that translucent look that watercolour paints have. So uh, I thought I would make use of it. 
I also used the eraser. So anyway, I was talking, I was telling you, the br I got distracted. I was telling you about the brushes that I used. So I used the pencil, the hard and dry uh, pencil. And then I use all the washers are put on with a delicate on dry brush. And then they are uh, blended out with the harsh chaos blender. And then at the very end of the painting, I start going painting in detail now when i paint detail um i don't do this a lot with traditional watercolors but i think i find it works really well with uh digital and that is i go in with an opaque color so it'd be like using a gouache uh paint really where it does block out the color underneath it obscures it so it's not translucent it's opaque and the brush that works really well for that is called harsh light harsh lines so the four brushes I used, including the pencil, uh, the delicate on dry, the harsh chaos, and the harsh lines are, uh, oh, and I also used the putty eraser. So now I'm up to five brushes. And I, I do make extensive use of the eraser in this. And I'm using it there on the screen now. You can see I'm lifting out color with it. Uh, again, that's quite a, you know, recognized technique that you would use in watercolor where you can soften the paint. Don't let anybody tell you you can't uh, remove paint in watercolor. You can, you can wet it and then dab it with a bit of tissue and it will lift the color right out. You notice on that, um, on the, I don't know what you call them, that sort of grasses on the right hand side. Once I'd lifted them out with the eraser, I created a layer underneath it and painted in the green uh, to add a bit of color to those leaves. And then I went in and put a bit more uh, green over uh, different areas of the painting. And the idea of that was, uh, apart from to actually pick out the local colour in the photo, I wanted to use that green throughout the painting, and that's because then it becomes um, part, it, it, it all becomes harmonious, and the old painting seems balanced uh, because you're using the same colours. There's echoes of that colour in different areas of the painting. So now I've got the sort of local color on, I've created another layer and I am starting to think about shadows a little bit and starting to put those in. You can see I'm painting shadows on the rocks. So this painting is, is kind of, when I do the oil paintings, they, they take shape very quick and look like, almost like a finished painting uh, within five or ten minutes and then it, it's just about adding detail with the watercolor it is slightly different where it looks very unfinished and you just keep building it up and building it up and adding detail and shadows with the um, dark colors all the time always working uh, going from light to a little bit dark you don't sort of start off with your darkest colors uh, which you can do in in oil paint i suppose you're starting with your lights and um, building up those stronger colors. And then here, I felt that if I put some detail in these foreground rocks, it would push them forward against the rocks that are actually in the water. So I started to add a little bit of detail in there. Uh, and the other thing I, I want to say at the minute, it all looks a little bit flat because I want the, the white, to, of the water flowing over the rocks to be the whitest part of the painting but if you look now there's lots of areas on the rocks that are white and um even in the foreground there's bits of white so uh it, it does look flat and that needs to be addressed so i could have uh, started off with a stronger color but i didn't but i'm going to have to think about that it's something to think about um, your sort of tonal contrast within a painting. Although it looks sort of okay, I think there's the, the rocks are clashing with the water. They're demanding your attention at this point. They're saying, look at me, not the water. And really, it is a painting about the uh, flowing water. So I've just sort of now actually working here we go look so at this point i realized that i need to start uh, changing the color 
or, or strengthening the colour within these rocks so that the water has got a chance to um, really pop. You'll notice I'm varying up the colour all the time as well, just sort of tweaking it uh, here and there to add a little bit of variety to the thing. And then I think, well, obviously the tree needs some attention. And I decide to give uh, put a shadow in behind the tree. So what is important, what I pointed out in the live stream last night was when you start putting um shadows in you've got to think about where the sun is and where the sh existing shadows are in your painting because you do not want the uh shadows going the opposite way and it's amazing how many times i've seen that in paintings when i've been going around exhibitions where people have clearly uh create invented a shadow if you like and it's totally opposite to uh, the scene i was watching a video on youtube the other day actually of a, a map painting where somebody had created this really nice scene uh, of this sort of building stuck on a, a floating island but the building the shadow on the building was going the, the opposite way to the shadows on the trees and it was like so glaringly obvious but um clearly not to the to the artist because sometimes the person who's doing the painting is the last person to see the mistakes so uh, that's how it is i guess so anyway putting the shadows in there that has um brought the foreground forward as well so i'm happy with that and now i'm going in with the um this is with the harsh lines brush so this is the go go ash effect where it's, so it's on another layer. This is sitting on top of the stack and I'm actually painting in uh, the colours. Now I'm going, I've gone back to the uh, delicate brush again just to add a few more shadows into this tree and I've sort of made sure that that shadow on that bark that's missing is in the right place, as I mentioned earlier. Somebody was uh, showing me in the live stream how you can adjust contrast and um, colour uh, intensity and things uh, by pressing Control J on the keyboard. That's what that little menu was that popped up there. I haven't explored it properly yet, but I'm going to. So um, something um, I need to find out about. Still making those shadows even darker and just putting sort of splotches of colour on there. All adds to the uh, atmosphere of the painting, really. I'm quite liking this. It, it is a, a very sort of delicate painting with, with pastel colours, not really harsh colours. I decided that I needed to invent a um, branch there to sort of fill up that space a little bit. And I put a couple of branches in. And then I asked the people on the stream, should I stick some leaves in? And they said, yeah, that would be a cool idea. And one says, put, put some, uh, you know, a couple of falling leaves, add a bit of motion into it. So I did that. So uh, if you join my live streams, you can, you know, contribute to the painting and make suggestions, which is really good fun. Back to that um, harsh lines brush for the opaque effect. Put a few more twigs in. And then uh, a, a little bit more detail in the water as that's sort of flowing. Then and I tried putting a branch in there and I didn't like it. That had to come out. It was just look, just not working. I don't know what it was. It just uh, wasn't right. So there we are. That is pretty much it. All signed, done and dusted. The actual painting took two and a half hours. So there you go. Um, a stream with uh, next to a tree i guess all painted in watercolor in art rage hey if you've enjoyed this video if you have big thumbs up as always is much appreciated if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because i have lots of videos like this and i would love to be sharing them with you so hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye